So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Karan, and your you have Yogita there and me here, and we are from Green Essentials. For those of you who joined our webinars last month called Anyone Can Grow, you've already uh, you know learned a little bit about us. Uh, we run a sort of kitchen garden store in Goa, and we teach people how to grow their own food. But uh, we are really excited to bring you this session because uh, this store that I'm mentioning, which is called Green Essentials, uh, actually started because of this lady we have here today speaking to us. And I am not trying to flatter her when, you, when I say that because uh, our journey into creating Green Essentials started when Yogita and I were gifted, I think for our first anniversary, one of Poonam's composters. So it was a Chota Khamba at that time. And it came to us by road from Bangalore via a, via a friend who picked it up and gifted it to us. And uh, I think Yogita decided that it was just so amazing that she needed to figure out a way to promote it here in Goa. And you know, uh, Yogita's excitement tends to be infectious. And uh, you know, she was like, yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna start selling these. And uh, then what happened was I looked at her and I said, but you know, we need to have a store or something to sell these. Her idea had been to sell right out of home. And I was like, yeah, yeah, no way that's not happening. So anyway, we ended up starting Green Essentials and of course composting uh, at home also at the same time. And eventually we ended up doing a lot of kitchen gardening too. So we'd like to thank Poonam for that. Um, Poonam, other than being this person who's created an amazing tool for those of us as individuals who care about our own waste to actually deal with our own waste is also one of the most amazing human beings that I know. Uh, so yes, I know I'm sounding like a bit of a fan, but it's true. And we are super happy to have her here and, you know, trying our best to embarrass her before she can get started. Right. So, <laughs> um, so in this session, what we suggested uh, to Daily Dump and to Poonam is that, you know, composting is something that is really, really something that a lot of us have suddenly got interested in since we are stuck home. It may be because we are stuck without compost in lockdown. It may be because suddenly we realize that, you know, this kitchen waste or our household waste is something we want to deal with. So we are going to do two sessions. One session this one is about composting at the household level, what you can do as an individual or a family. And next Thursday, we are planning another session, which is about composting at a larger scale. If you are, a, say, a workplace with many people there or a housing society, which wants to you know, cut out how much waste is actually going back into the landfills in the city, uh, leading to a cleaner environment. So, uh, you know, without any further delay, I will just request, uh, I, I, what I'll do is I'll just start with a simple poll, which I'd request you to sort of answer before we get started into the session. We have, we'll run a few polls, you know, as time goes along, just to get some feedback and understand what your personal challenges are, right? So if you can just take this minute to please respond to this before I hand over to Poonam and start the session. So the question is, you know, what scares you most about trying composting? And I think scares is the appropriate word because we've had people come to us with, you know, a great amount of trepidation in their expressions and voices. And uh, like most other things, I would say it's easy when you know how, but we'd love to get your feedback here too. Other than Poonam, we have a couple, couple of our colleagues from Daily Dump here also. Uh, one is Vinita, who has helped us put, a, put together this session. And we also have Kiran. So Vinita and Kiran and also Yogita will be putting together your questions. Please feel, to, feel free to put in your questions when you want to. If you're watching this session on YouTube, then you can comment right there and we'll pick up your questions or respond to them over there. Uh, if you happen to be using Zoom, I can say they, see there are several of us over here. Then just go into the Q&A tab that is at the bottom. You know, it's like two speech bubbles. There's the Q&A button right at the bottom of your interface and you can enter your questions in there. Okay. 
All right. Okay. We are only halfway there. I'll give you another 30 seconds, please. If everyone can just answer the poll. Okay. So I'll end the poll now. Thank you for taking the trouble to do that. And I will now pass on to Poonam. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to this uh, wonderful session. Karan, of course, has embarrassed me. Uh, but I would like to say that it is an honor and pleasure to be part of Yogita and Karan's lives because they've enriched it as much as uh, they, think, they say that I have enriched theirs. And uh, at a time like COVID and post-COVID, all of us are suddenly appreciating all the relationships we have. And um, so very grateful, Karan and Yogita, for being uh, part of your journey and you guys being part of Daily Dump's journey. Thank you so much. And it's a pleasure having to de do this with Hasgeek. And my colleagues, Vinny and Kiran, are there to answer questions. Um, and I'm already seeing a lot of questions pop up in the chat window. So we will answer all of them. I promise we will answer all of them. So let's hang in there. I also assume from the tone of the questions that have already appeared that uh, many of you have actually tried composting. But uh, there may be, so I'm going to ask quickly uh, in the chat, how many of you have not done composting at all? So I get a sense uh, of how many out there actually, this is the first time. How many is it the first time? Or you can raise your hands or just say plus plus at the chat thing. So I get an idea. Right. So are there many of you the first time? Okay, there is one. Any more for the first time? Okay. All right. So we are getting some. Oh, yes. Okay. So there's a lot of first timers. So all the people who've tried it have failed and you have those questions. We will come back to you slightly later during this presentation. I'll start from the beginning uh, because uh, that's a great place to start. So I'm going to quickly share my screen. And uh, I want to take you through the journey. My, my background is I was trained as an industrial designer from NID many years ago. And I was very interested to see, okay, can this large messy problem like waste, is there something that design can do? And that's where I was coming from. Of course, I didn't like the mess. I love cleaning. So with this, this combination, I decided, okay, I've got to, you know, I've got to figure this out. So when I actually got into it and then looked at the waste and traveled and met so many people, visited so many landfill sites, I put together this very simple extract of our journey. We all want a clean city. Everybody wants it. There's nobody I've met who said, I want a dirty city, I want a dirty country. But then why is it still dirty? So uh, our research actually showed that it's dirty because about 40 years ago, whatever we put together and threw it away was mostly natural and biodegradable. The minute we started using a lot of plastic, that story changed. So our habits were the same. We were throwing everything out and we thought it would become, it, there was not a problem. But what we didn't realize is that the materials had changed and materials didn't behave the same way they did in the time of our grandparents. And so, uh, so the, the key thing is in today's modern world, if we don't separate, we will not be clean. We put everything in one bag. And the in, other interesting factor is and when we ask people, do you know that this is why this is happening? They'd say, yeah, but what can I do? I mean, I have, I mean, what do you expect me to do? There's, I don't know what else to do and the government needs to do something. So we said, all right, actually what you can do is first you should know what mm. the core problem is. And the core problem is if you actually look at your dustbin, right? My dustbin, your dustbin, we open it out and we weigh everything that is in the bin on a daily basis and you do a math kind of thing over the uh, month, you will find that the average dustbin is 60% organic in weight, not in volume, but in weight. So that means every Indian is throwing out this poison bag every day. It's poison because you are taking uh, tomato, 
and your khara dhanya cuttings and your onion peels and you're mixing it with plastic or a battery or a sanitary napkin. If you mix it, it becomes poison. But if you keep it separate, then you have a chance to recover some of it and you do not have so much poison to transport. And what were we doing? We were spending taxpayers' money to take all these poison bullets, take poison, transport poison, and dump poison. So I said, God, this is ridiculous. I mean, there must be a better way of doing this. And so I never knew anything about composting. I remember biology class where we di bisected or dissected, whatever you call it, a, a cockroach or a butterfly or something like that. I don't even remember. That was the extent to my, of my knowledge of nature. And composting actually got me started. And that's why I tell everybody, you know, and today this World Environment Day is the theme is let nature in. Uh, make time for nature, especially at the time of COVID, we're all realizing we've, we've just messed with nature's balance. So this is a reminder and composting is a great way to reconnect with nature if you've never connected with nature. So what I did was I started learning about composting and I discovered, my God, this smelly stuff becomes like this rich black material and it's very good food for plants. And then I was so excited. I asked people, I said, you know, you can do this in, the home, in your house. And everybody said, no, are you mad? Why would I keep waste inside my house? There's no way. It's unhealthy. And I get all kinds of bugs. And uh, so then I said, this has to happen. I mean, that's when we designed uh, India's first home composter. And I had done some work on actually understanding what sustainability was and was teaching at that time, design. And I said, okay, I need to make a composter that will fit India. And that's why we created our signature terracotta composter. And um, the other waste, if you keep this organic waste out of landfill, I'll tell you about composting, but I just want to cover the other parts of the waste that you generate at home. The other waste that is like your paper, your plastic, your, uh, uh, you know, any metal, glass, all of that is usually recyclable if you keep it clean and dry and make sure that it reaches the recycling sector. And yes, India does have a great recycling infrastructure, we have lots of people doing this, uh, lots of jobs are dependent on this. And it's very important for us to keep this clean and safe for them because they actually have to put their hands in to separate this. So if I put a dirty sanitary napkin inside my newspaper file, it's really very difficult when you see people sort it and have to deal with your mess. So being uh, mindful about keeping this separate is actually our understanding that there are other people and we need to be a little careful on what we throw out for them. Um, and whether it's a person or it's water or soil, everything is important. I mean, we put all kinds of stuff into our water, all kinds of stuff into our soil. We don't realize that that is finally going to come back and bite us. And we, the important thing also we are realizing after all these years of work, even children don't understand this connection. They're able to articulate it as a, in their words. But when you, they can't understand and connect with it as a practice in their lives. There's a gap over there. And that is something that we all have to constantly remind ourselves about. So there is this other, uh, this hazardous waste, which is either your, you know, your batteries, your medicine, uh, paints, uh, all your electronic material. All of that needs again to be handled very safely. Sanitary waste now, because of COVID, there is a lot of legislation being put into place because, uh, to have uh, proper medical waste and sanitary waste handling. But we had not put in enough infrastructure. We had not spent enough money in managing this pipeline till now. That is the hard truth. Um, that's why it's very important to make all the switches. If you're using sanitary napkin, please change to either a completely biodegradable napkin or a menstrual cup or a reusable cloth bag. If you're using uh, diapers, 
become part of these large groups that are forming all over the urban centers where mothers are supporting other mothers to use uh, cloth diapers instead of these disposable diapers. So there are solutions emerging and it's very important that you be part of it because it really matters. And you should only give about 10% to the landfill every day. So take a minute now and just ask yourself, how much of this do I do? And how, much is, how easy is it to do? How much can I do easily? And in my house, I am able to throw waste out at 10% once in 10 days. I don't have to throw it out every day because I manage keep everything separate. And of course I compost. So for us, it's also what we've learned is you can provide the technology, but it's very important for us to also change our mindsets. If uh, we are putting government and tax money into big uh, waste plants, very often we find those waste plants, uh, nobody's maintaining properly. And then it becomes expensive to run them. And it becomes expensive to cart long distances. No, the truck drivers don't want to take such long hauls uh, to put waste into some village somewhere. Then the villagers over there get upset. And they say, why the hell are you dumping your waste in front of us? So it has to become decentralized. So along with the technology, we have to do a lot of work in mindset. How many of us actually have inside? Already I see in the questions, people are saying, I'm scared of bugs. So when I started, I will tell you a story. There is a black soldier fly maggot that comes in composting. And I didn't know anything about composting. So one day, and it was during the rains, I was doing all this experimenting, and I had no clue, okay? And I'm not one of those very scientific kind of people. So I don't, I don't go deep into research papers. I don't know how to read them really well. And uh, that's Vinita's uh, forte. Vinita's sitting here also. She's our go-to researcher. And uh, so when I was experimenting, I didn't know that this black soldier fly maggot can multiply like, like, like really. I mean, they'll be like swarming. They'll all be shivering. There'll be so many that are swarming there. And so they, they were all over my place. They were under my carpet. They were inside my printer. And uh, at one point, my husband said, Poonam, what are you doing? I mean, do you have to do this? And it's then I realized, you know, people are saying they're scared of bugs. I said, okay, now I really need to get to the bottom of this guy. And I found, which no biology teacher had told me, and I never knew that this kind of concept existed, that there were good flies and there were good maggots. And I was like, take it over. I said, wow, there is something called good maggots. They look so creepy. How can they be good? And uh, that actually, again, started me on this journey of uh, understanding why nature is so important. And I asked myself, I've lived for 44 years without knowing nature. I must be the most slow learner in the world. Um, and this black soldier fly maggot this suddenly made me understand that these bugs are part of this balance system, an ecosystem. So if the ecosystem is working well, you will not have a problem. And the same thing we're learning now with COVID. The virus is contained in ecosystems. You mess with the ecosystem, you have a problem. So our mindset to this should be, am I doing this within the ecosystem? Then there should not be a problem. Today's locust problem is also the same thing. We've, we've messed with some balance, whether it's the hydrological cycle balance, whether it is the, uh, you know, the earth's uh, water retention balance. So if we start and understand that there's this system and it works in harmony when there's a balance, then we will not feel scared of a bug. Then our mind can tell itself that actually bugs are not a problem. Have I created the right ecosystem in my house where the composter is working well and all the bugs, the good bugs that are sitting there are doing their job? And the problem will never become too big because it's only a home composter. The other thing is, how often do we think that if we throw something out and it's far away, we solve the problem? All of us think that. But actually, how do you bring it inside your homes and make it visible and make it challenging? So that's what we try to do in our company. We try and make it easy. We say bugs are there. We make it visible. We talk about them fully. We say, see, this is the good things. This is how you control them. 
This is how, if you have a problem, we're there to help you. So we don't say well, there will be no bugs. No, we don't ever say that. We are saying there will be some bugs. These are the kinds of bugs. And most of them are very good bugs and none of them are harmful. And this is how you balance them. And then again, the other thing is people will say, why don't you make this com you know, this complicated, <clears throat> I've seen abroad, it's all closed in a box. You press a button and it will become compost in two days. That should work. But India doesn't work like that. Our homes are not built like that. And even if you had to do that, it will cost you some 15,000 rupees to do it. And you don't know when it will fail. When I have a washing machine that fails, right? I, for, for, I have to run around and ask this guy to come and service it and service it. It's okay for a washing machine because you don't have to wash every day. But for waste, because you generate it every day, even one day you'll get irritated with the smell or you'll get irritated and then you have to throw it out and maybe the guy will not come and pick it up. In many places in India right now, because of COVID, the waste workers are not coming to pick up your waste. So then you realize, my God, I need to be self-sufficient. I need to figure out what I can do to manage by myself. And yes, lots of people feel that it's not my job. The government should do it. A uh, large company should do it. Why should an individual? But the beauty is it's our waste. And sometimes we need to think about how we should handle it. Partly. So... In fact, when Modi started his uh, Swachh Bharat campaign, we had sent him this presentation saying that this is the seven point program we think that's important to keep India clean. And uh, we still feel that if India's people have to participate in keeping India clean, we have everybody to be on the same page. And that's what drives our work daily. We say, how can we make it easy for you to understand? How can we make it fun for you to understand? How can we help you actually become closer to uh, making sure that you throw zero waste out of, your, um, out of your homes every day. I'm going to stop here for a minute now, just to get a sense of um, any questions that we can take now before you go, we go on to the next session. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm looking at the questions. Uh, is the volume okay for everybody? So, Poonam, I'll just read out some questions for you. Uh, yeah. Volume is fine. Um, there is a question from Manisha Thorat, and she says that she had seen a video long ago with a compost pipe in the center of a planter. Yeah. yeah. And she's tried doing that, but uh, I think it was not very successful. Uh, and successful, very specifically, she says that the, nothing seems to grow around. Is, is it that we cannot have composting and growing plants together? This is one question. Yeah. So there are, in fact, you will see uh, when you look at the internet, right? Uh, you will see many, many kinds of solutions, right? I will run you through some very popular ones. The pipe is a very popular one, especially in Kerala. And uh, uh, I will... And I also will tell you something interesting about solutions. Some solutions will work for you, some may not. They may work for other people. But fundamentally, please understand, composting is about, is a chemical reaction. It generates heat. Okay. So when you have something that is generating heat and needs oxygen, right? So you have to ask yourself, if I had a pipe and if I put waste down, Am I going to have the optimum decomposition happening because all the air is locked in? And once you have uh, anaerobic decomposition, that means uh, uh, decomposition without oxygen, then there is no, uh, there is too much of uh, uh, heat generated over there, which is not good for any plant growth. So you, it, it depends on where you've put it, how you put it, how wide your pipe is. So uh, if it didn't work for you, it may most probably would have been because the ground below did not have enough sufficient uh, uh, nutrition, plus it had, was generating too much heat, the composting inside. And so no other plants would grow around it. The other very uh, solution that keeps coming back to us is, can I grind all my uh, 
kitchen waste in my mixie, add water into it and directly put the slurry in my plants. There are some people who will swear that it works. So I, my only, my thing is whether it works or not, it will definitely attract rats. So okay. if you're okay with rats, then go for it. Okay. Uh, there's another question, Poonam, which is, uh, where Emma asks, do you maggots always come with composting? Are they supposed to? Yeah. So maggots will uh, most often come with composting. There are some customers, for some reason, their diets and the temperatures that are generated inside that home composter do not allow the maggots to come. They then, in the sense, the maggots' uh, eggs are not uh, formed. If you have a uh, temperature above 65 degrees, then maggot eggs don't survive. And no other eggs also survive. So uh, it depends on your temperature. Maggots coming is very good because they're the biggest carnivores as far as food is concerned. They will devour all that food and make composting go very fast. What they release in terms of their smells, there's a certain kind of chemical they release, which keeps housefly populations in check. So houseflies don't come and lay their eggs. Black soldier fly maggots are harmless. The flies that come out of black soldier fly maggots are called, are, are they, they're the soldier flies. They have no mouth parts so that they can't carry disease. And uh, because they keep away the house fly, which is actually the pathogen carrying fly. So composting actually becomes a safe space. In fact, some scientists apparently have used black soldier fly maggots to control house fly populations in certain areas. So yes, maggots are very good. They are terribly ir irksome if they come out during the monsoon. How to keep maggots inside? Make sure it's not very wet. Make sure there's enough food and then they will not come outside. In case your maggots are coming outside, you can create a moat kind of thing. Kiran has done that in her house. So the maggots go and just drop into the moat and every day you can actually scoop them out and keep them under a tree. Birds love them. They're very good uh, chicken feed also. Very high in nitrogen. In fact, uh, all over the world, uh, the world is moving to creating these maggots in large numbers, crushing them as nitrogen and feeding them to chickens. Right. Poonam, we have several more questions, but what I'll do is that we line them up for later in the session. Okay. Also, if uh, Yogita, Kiran and Vinita can respond to some of those questions one on one while we are getting there. Right. And then we'll retain the best of those questions to share with everybody else also. Okay. okay? So, so I'm please gonna, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to quickly cover composting itself. How do you compost? What is the basics of composting? What you, are you seeing my screen? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. So this is our site. Why I'm using the screen, on the, I mean, why am I using the site right now? It's because we designed the site so that you could learn from the site directly. And everything is always available for you. We also have a very active YouTube channel. So you can see all the films of our products there. But I'll start with basics of composting. So if you go to the learn section, the basics of composting are here. This is your kitchen waste. What all can go in? your bread, your pizza, your cheese, um, uh, leftover food, if it's not too runny, that means I can't put rasam inside, I can't put uh, buttermilk inside, but uh, I will strain off the extra water and put everything else inside. Uh, the only thing that cannot go is the hard coconut shell and of course no plastic, absolutely no plastic. So this kitchen waste looks like this after about 17, 18 days, you will see the bones are still formed, the mango pits are still visible, leaves forms will still be visible. If you have a very thick part of the banana, which is that uh, bunch part, you'll still see it. And this will be after 45 days after you have sieved it, you've passed it through a sieve. So this is basically the compost's journey. Yeah. And the what, is, what are the aspects of decomposition that you should know? A, thank God man didn't invent it. It's a natural process. It's nature's way of recycling all its nutrients. Uh, what starts off as food for something else becomes food for some other creature. So the apple that falls from the tree becomes food for all those little insects and microbes and then goes back as food back to the tree. It's full of life. And... Uh, I never knew that soil had life. 
and good healthy soil is supposed to have life. Nobody taught me when I was in school. They never looked and told me, look at soil. Look at this magic thing called soil. I thought soil was, I mean, it was not useless. It was not something you looked at. You just stamped on it every day. But literally compost makes you understand that soil has life. And if it didn't have life, life on earth wouldn't exist. And um, it releases leachate and reduces in volume. And how does it happen? It just microbes are there all over us. And they start acting on uh, organic matter, which is your apple, after it starts growing old. It's the aging process and then it becomes food for something else because the microbial action happens. Uh, when it has oxygen, it has no odor. And that's because the chemistry, which I'll just show you, it generates heat. Heat, it's an exothermic reaction and it needs the right mix. For composting to happen without any, any problem and happen effectively, you need your kitchen waste, which is mainly nitrogen. You need to add uh, carbon, which is your cocoa peat powder. And I have some here in my hand. So this is cocoa peat powder. It's the, uh, it is made in many factories along the coast in India. And uh, you need the moisture that is inherently in kitchen waste. And you need the presence of oxygen. If you don't have oxygen, then you have a problem with the smell. So if it smells, then you just have to go and aerate it a bit and add some carbon and your equation will balance out. There are many benefits of compost and I'm going to not cover all of them because uh, I'd like to go on to showing you how to compost at home. And the methods are, people will say, what is the difference between wormy compost and your compost? Vermi compost. So we do aerobic decomposition. Aerobic decomposition is you take your uh, organic material and we have a powder. <clears throat> Basically, it's cocoa peat powder. You add that daily. Daily. That's very, very important to remember. You have to put carbon daily. And we have enough oxygen in our products because we've designed them like that. And the moisture in the uh, organic waste itself gets released. And that makes sure that you get carbon dioxide on the other side of the equation and not hydrogen sulfide or ammonia. Those are the two smelly gases. That's why when we say, you know, everybody says uh, uh, waste will smell. Waste will not smell. Hydrogen sulfide and ammonia smell. So uh, remember, waste was uh, composting itself does not need to smell. Anaerobic is when you don't have oxygen in the pile like biogas and vermicomposting is the same thing, but you have worms, you add worms to it. And because you add worms, you have to be very careful not to put too much meat, not to put too much lemon, and not to put things like onion peels because it messes with the uh, acidity of the pile and the heat. And worms will die in highly acidic piles or piles that have too much heat. So we don't recommend wormy composting in our products only because we believe that you should not throw anything out. Even lemons, you should be able to compost if you're not already using it for a bioenzyme or you're not, uh, you know, lots of people actually take lemons, dry it out very well in the heat and then grind it and put it into their dishwashing, uh, uh, you know, material that they make at home. So there are many uses of lemons, but lots of people don't have time to do it also. So they, we'd suggest that they compost it and that's why we don't suggest uh, vermicompost. So you should start today and our role in, uh, if decomposition is a natural process, lots of people say, what are you doing? I mean, why should daily dump exist? So our role is to have people understand the process and adopt it in any which way. We don't say you have to buy our products, not at all. You can buy whichever product, but you understand that it is easy to do. And we are, we've made this very easy for you to understand all the visuals in our site. And you can see, um, and learn from it and we are always there at the end of a phone call on WhatsApp to give you guidance. So I will just show you the what we do in our products. So like I said, you take your kitchen waste and you add carbon every day, right? And this particular powder that we've got a special mix of, it has the microbes in it, it has some compost and it has got cocoa peat. So you can just add cocoa peat and it'll still work for you. Um, the 
What does the remix powder do? It actually does is absorbs the extra moisture. It makes composting stir free. If you're using only dried leaves to compost, that means you take your kitchen waste and add dried leaves. Because if you know, dry leaves are also carbon. But if you add dry leaves, they tend to compact and they take a very long time to break down. So the absorption power for, for water which is released is not as great as the powder. So therefore you'll have to stir every day. Otherwise the oxygen gets compacted over there and doesn't go in. And uh, whereas with the remix powder, you don't have to stir at all. You just keep layering every day kitchen waste, powder, kitchen waste, powder, and you get very, very rich compost. And this powder itself is a great source of carbon, which is what you need for the microbial action to happen. And the resultant compost, because you already put the remix powder, it's friable enough in the sense that it's loose enough for you to directly uh, put your seeds into it. And the beauty about remix powder is that it helps you get even the first time beginner will get it right the first time. Whereas in the beginning when we just started, nobody wanted to buy this extra remix powder. So they used to use leaves and it was such a problem because they'd fail. And our remix powder contains some microbial activity. Now, some people have asked already in the questions, what can go in, what can't go in? How can I compost uh, um, coconut leaves? So coconut is an amazing tree actually. There's that part, that very thick part that is attached to the trunk, right? That is absolutely impossible to compost. You have to store it and store it and a lot of people use it for fuel. The farmers use it for all kinds of other processing uh, things that they sell it for. The leaves itself, just the, the thing with, where, where the broom comes out, the brooms uh, thing, that also is very difficult to compost unless you cu cut it up. And nobody has the time to actually sit and cut it up. So the coconut itself is a very, very, very hardy plant. All parts of the coconut are very hard except for the cocoa peat. And this cocoa peat is what we use every day for composting. What you cannot go in is all on the right side. You can't put dead animals or their poop into it. Neither can you put their hair. Dead animals' hair also do not put into your home composter. If you want to compost your, dead, uh, your animal's poop and your animal hair, you must do it in a completely different composter. And you should keep that far away and you should mature it for at least a year before you use it. Um, batteries in medicine, you cannot put cigarette butts. Newspaper, uh, try not to put, it's got enough ink. Then any, anything on plastic, disposals, you, can, you should not put. What you can put is all your fruit and vegetables, all your cooked food, which I said you shouldn't be runny. Uh, I put a lot of these uh, bones of, uh, uh, you know, whether it's fish bones, chicken bones, mutton bones, because a home actually doesn't eat that much and they remove all the meat usually. Uh, tea and coffee you should put. Uncoated paper you can shred and put. Dried flowers, eggshells you should crush. All the seeds you should put. What you need to watch out for is uh, compaction. While you're putting your composting in, just imagine I have a lot of watermelon. Now watermelon is actually mostly water. So it will release all that water and you won't, you, won't, you won't actually imagine how much water it releases. So you may have put a little less cocoa peat. At that time when you're opening the lid and again looking at it and you see it's becoming a little runny, you must add more cocoa peat and stir it in. So you're not allowing things to compact because the minute things compact, there's no oxygen going in and you, you want to avoid that at any cost. Acidity, I make sure that all, my husband has a Musambi juice every day. So I make sure that I quarter all the Musambi peels. I don't put the whole things because once you, if you put the whole things, they're highly acidic and they get, they take longer to break down. And of course, size. In our com big uh, community composters, once I remember I had gone to check and I saw a huge watermelon. It must have got one dent or something. It got spoiled. The entire watermelon those people had put without cutting it. Now, you, if you do things like that, then it's going to much, take much longer to compost. So you shouldn't be surprised. So you don't have to cut it into very small pieces. Nothing has to be cut to very small pieces. Nothing has to be ground like chutney. But you can't put a huge, full cucumber in your composter. It'll take up too much space. 
and B will take too long to compost. So just cut it into at least quarters and chuck it in. Now, the other thing we tell people is, trust your senses. You've got your eyes, you've got your nose, and you've got a sense of touch. You, by looking at it, and good cooks will tell you that this works, right? All the good chefs will tell you, I just have to look at it and I know whether it tastes sour or salty or whatever. So you'll also develop this sensibility. And we put all these photos up just for you to see what it should look like and sense like. This is about fresh waste when you just put in. You'll see, I use soap nuts at home to uh, do my washing. And you'll see the soap nuts over there that are squished out. Um, and this is how, when you layer your cocoa peat, right? You should layer it fully. No waste should be seen. That's one way to keep fruit flies out. Fruit flies will come and sit on rotten food. Anywhere. Even in your very clean kitchen, if you have a rotten banana, the fruit fly will come from somewhere and sit. And then you'll ask us, where did the fruit fly come from? But flies and eggs are all over. Insects are all over. We don't see them. Doesn't mean they're not there. Um, so that's how your waste should look. Completely covered once you have put your day's waste and put your day's cocoa peat over. As you keep putting waste and cocoa peat, you might see this white fungus. Now that is a very good sign. It means that your composting is having, happening optimally. If you see a gray, uh, gray or darkish, blackish kind of fungus, then you need to take action. You need to mix it up and make sure you add more cocoa peat and you add a little bit of microbes. So you can get away from the bad uh, fungus. Now this is what it looks like when I've just stirred it after 10. I mean, you know, filled the unit. I've got the compost. You'll find that the vegetable peels are still visible. That's my watermelon. Oh no, avocado, I think. Yeah, avocado. And uh, you'll find the roots and you can still see it. So in 10 days, it's still, some parts of it are visible. It takes longer for it to start breaking down. Now this is a bad pile. This is what a bad pile looks like. And this is what I was telling you, you know, the maggots. I mean, this is very creepy, right? If you're not used to this, you'll say, Ugh, what the hell is that? But the beauty is this does not need to happen. It happens only when you don't know enough about composting. And even if this happens, if I went and put actually enough cocoa peat into this pile now and I mixed it in, it'll all kickstart again. That's the beauty. Everything goes back. Nature has this phenomenal code of making sure that it takes back everything that it gives you. So there's actually nothing wrong going to happen to that. It's just that we have not grown up in the uh, rural areas, so we think that these kind of things freak us out. But this is a great way to understand a little bit of the balance that you know, nature has. Now, this is a healthy maggot population. So when you start seeing maggots clawing inside, you know, yes, it's going well. All is well in God's world. Now, this is too dry. Now, uh, the beauty about composting, like I kept saying, balance, balance. Composting also teaches you balance because if you make it too wet, you'll have a problem. It'll start smelling. Maggots will come out. If you make it too dry, composting will completely stop. Because... And I was very surprised. So I went to one scientist in India in social science and said, what is this? I mean, I thought, you know, it's dry. You know, it should dry out. No. He's saying, no. Water is life. On the film of water, microbes live. And microbes need to break, keep breaking material down to its basic elements. That's their job. So when you have something that is completely dry like this, you need to kickstart it. You need to sprinkle lots of water. You can add curd as an accelerator or what you call a microbial activity starter. And uh, it'll start living again. Microbes will come in, they'll inhabit, they'll start eating it up. They'll have a party. Now, this is too wet and smelly. You can see it's wet. There's a, there's a sogginess to it and there's a kind of, everything is clumped up a little bit. So you need to add some cocoa peat powder. This is ready to see. It's become brown, material has broken down. And you know that it's, if you sieve, you'll get one round. And whatever remains on top of the sieve, I put it back into the fresh waste for composting. And this is completely sieved. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people say, I don't have time to sieve. And I say, damn good, you shouldn't have, you, you should not actually sieve. If you go to this part, 
And if I just took out some big bits by myself, there's a groundnut shell over there. I would just take that out. I would put that back into the fresh waste and I'll just use this directly in my soil. I'll store it for another one month. I'll keep it moist. And then I'll use it for my gardening. I'll go to Green Essentials. I'll buy my seeds and I will start gardening. So you don't really have to uh, sieve unless you want to sell your compost. That tea-like consistency is actually only necessary when you sell or when you buy. When you buy, you want to see it like this. I mean, you say you have to because that's what a customer wants. But the plants really don't need this. The plants are okay with the others. So that's how it looks like. Now, how, when you harvest compost, so when you start composting, today you start composting, you can start composting in a bucket. You can start composting in any container, but please remember the container should have a lid. And the container needs to have aeration holes. So I will go to our product after this, but let me start with testing in a bucket. For all the people who have not done composting till now, you take a 30 liter or 20 liter bucket, you drill holes on the sides. For drilling holes, you don't have to have a drill gun, nothing like that. You take a sharp object, like even your uh, big needle uh, or a, you know, a screwdriver, heat it on the gas, and it'll go through the plastic. So you make these holes. Don't make holes at the bottom one third of the bucket. Keep all the holes on the top, top two thirds. After you made the holes, you make the holes, the gap of say this much, this much, say this much, so like that, right? Um, after you made the holes, you put your uh, cocoa peat powder uh, in the base. You put four fistfuls of cocoa peat powder in the base. You put your daily waste. If you're a family of four, your daily waste will not be more than a kilo of waste, ideally. So you put that waste and then you take another six fistfuls of cocoa peat powder and you layer it. Next day, do the same thing. If you want to do it twice a day, no problem. You put your waste, you put cocoa peat powder. Put waste, put cocoa peat powder. If you put less waste than one kilo, you put less cocoa peat powder, but make sure you cover it fully. Yeah, clear? So you've taken the bucket, you put the cocoa peat powder, you put your waste and you covered it with cocoa peat powder. You do that daily. So today when you start, you will fill that one bucket in anything between five to 10 days. Once you've done that, you leave it. You mark your day when you start. The day you start, after one and a half months, you open that bucket. In between months a week, you open it and stir it up a little. Make sure that you've tested for moisture. The moisture shouldn't be too less or too much. So you've only opened it once a week. You've kept it closed after you've filled it. And one and a half months down the line, you open it, it will be ready for compost for you to use. In the sense, it's ready for you to take out, transfer into a sack or a, another container and store it for another month, keep it moist. Why do we say store it? Because we don't know that we're not doing any tests to see whether it's uh, completely uh, become compost or not. I would not advise you to use it for vegetable uh, uh, gardening. If you wanted it for house plants, then it's ready for you to use. <coughs> like indoor plants and all that. Once you do that and you feel, huh, this is easy and I managed it, then you go buy whichever product you really want. That's, it's as simple as that. <coughs> Sorry. You put your waste, you cover with cocoa peat powder daily. If you just did this and didn't do anything else, you didn't add any accelerator, you didn't add any curd, you didn't add um, um, any fancy thing, you will still get compost. And that compost will be rich compost. So I tell people, you try it. If it works for you, and if you don't, if you have any problems during this time, the maggots have come out or they've got some bugs or they're extra fruit flies or they smell while you're doing this, get onto a call with us. 991642661. We have a WhatsApp uh, Dr. Kamba helpline. You send us a WhatsApp image of your bucket. You send us a WhatsApp ma message. We'll tell you, we'll do a diagnosis and we'll get you going and confident. 
once you're confident, I promise you, you will never give it up for life. You realize that this is such an important and very beautiful thing to do because you get very excited. And you say, wow, this is like too much. I can see this black gold. And, uh, you know, it, it's a journey that you will, you will always even share with other people. So I just want to show you this. This maggot shells look like that. Now I'm going to show you the black soldier fly maggot. <clears throat> so we also have, just for your information, uh, we have a sapling test and a jar test. So if there are some gardeners who are very particular about when to use their compost and they have better knowledge about what kind of, uh, for the rose, they have this kind of additive. So if you're one of those Ustad gardeners, you may want to test your compost before you use it. So we have these two tests. Please have a look at it if you want to see this. We, we tell you that even if you don't garden, right, that's very important. Even if you don't garden, composting is very important to do. And we've put together this fun set of uh, eight uh, things that you can do with the, gar gar with the compost that you get. And now, um, and you know, I, people tell me, what will I do? I have so much compost. I said, but that's a good problem to have. No, you don't have so much waste, but you have so much compost. Throwing out compost is much safer than throwing out organic waste. It's safe for you. It's safe for your earth. And so think about it. It's a good pr problem. Second thing what we've seen is the minute you put it up on Facebook or your Instagram, I have compost. Lots of people will come to you and say, gimme, 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 gimme. And uh, you can make new friends. That's, that's what we tell people. Composting brings you new friends. And it does. I, I mean, seriously, it does. <laughs> So let, let's, let's see now our wonderful friend, the house fly, uh, the black soldier fly. Yeah. So this is home composting. Now I'm just talking to you about all the problems that you can bring, right? You can get. It can be wet and smelly. We have answers to each of them. Too many maggots, pesky fruit flies. All the units are full. Ants are everywhere. Lizards, a lot of people are scared of lizards and sometimes what lizards have this phenomenal way. They'll sit inside your lid. So what we, we say is take a wooden stick and you hit it like this, then you open it and then it'll walk out. Uh, rain has got in, nothing is happening, it's broken, I've got rats. The interesting thing about composting, uh, composters, don't put it on, um, you know, on... Uh, on uh, just earth because rats dig under it and then it topples. Ideally place your composter on a hard surface like a concrete surface in your balcony, in your terrace, anything that is uh, rats don't actually dig under. And also rats uh, will be kept away if you plant a lot of mint, pudina around it. Um, so all these uh, uh, doubts are answered, but this black soldier fly, this is what the maggot looks like. And a, a close-up of it is even more to stare at it and say, okay, I'm not so grossed out about this. Every day this is meditation. See, I'm not so grossed out about this. I can handle it. It's only small. It's big in the picture. Actually, it's that small. Yeah. But trust me, I've been there. I used to think they're very gross. But it's just something that you have to change your mindset about. And it's very, very easy to, well, it's easy to, easy to do over time. So what's amazing about the maggots? Manages all kinds of ways to eat your chicken, fish, everything. It's very useful for feed. It improves the quality of the compost. It's much faster than vermicompost and it controls the harmful fly populations. And this is what it looks like. The eggs are very small, it becomes like this. And if you see here, this is how the fly emerges from that. Yeah? And once the fly emerges, this fly is actually harmless. It lives only for six days and it dies. So that's why it's called the black soldier fly. So it's completely harmless. Now I'm going to show you quickly how to do, this is uh, composting for uh, uh, kitchen waste. People are scared about the smell in kitchen waste composting. But there's another way of composting that are only for leaves. And this is not for coconut leaves. This is for every other kind of leaf. Yeah? 
leaves are very much more simpler to do they don't smell so much because if they put into our kind of leaf composters these, this is our product this is a leaf composter this these leaves actually are very very um, easy to compost because you don't have to look after them at all you just put them into this composter and daily you water them and because it's off the ground here water percolates down into the earth and uh, over time after about 6 months you can open that that door that is there and take out your comp done compost and leaf composting leaf compost is very very uh, valued for its nitrogen content it's very valued for lawns because it doesn't have seeds of other vegetables like your home compost has and so it's extremely nutrient rich and you can put uh, your twigs and uh, clippings flowers dried leaves everything uh ideally speaking don't put too much treated glass and uh, weeds and any diseased plants all you need to take is your garden waste put water daily you can put accelerator and you get leaf mulch and compost after 6 to 8 months starting and we have films on how our products work of course i've i've already shared that with you and uh, this is a very very simple thing to start with we have a range of products on this and uh, now i'm going to before i go on to the next section of actually showing you our products uh, i'll stop for a minute to take any other questions karan yes punam so punam what i'll do is that i'm just going to uh, sort of send out a poll or two while yeah. we wait yeah and Sounds then good. and then you know uh, I, I in the meantime if kiran vinita and yogita can kind of put together those questions which they would like to have answered at this point in time yeah so i'm just launching the first poll this is basically coming back to the question you spoke about at the beginning which is yeah. how much difference do you think our individual action matters yeah uh, sorry let's see what yeah. the people say yeah yeah yes and uh, i think in the context of uh, you know where we are right now and i think over the last couple of months we've seen that in in the places where uh, governments and larger agencies have struggled to cope uh, a lot of the stepping in and filling the gaps and in fact the leading work has been done by individuals and groups of individuals so you know if there was ever a time at which it could be clearly seen that individual action matters at least from my perspective i think that uh, you know this last two two and a half month period has kind of demonstrated it uh, very very powerfully yeah I, I, and it's always good to also have a contrary in view i'm mean, very happy to listen to it um i one thing i've learned by i mean i'm not an i'm not a conservationist by training or i'm not a, i'm just an ordinary ordinary person and at my ordinary person level i'm so fascinated by nature and i'm so one of the lessons i've learned is the diversity is very important and having people with different kinds of views and just having the option to listen to them is also very important especially in the work that we do that's true so, yeah no no absolutely uh so i'll just give it another minute while people are sort of answering yeah uh i think i'll i'll give you a couple of questions that i'm seeing here yeah. uh, one is that uh, I, uh, parvati says i have a lot of coconut husk in my home in kerala yeah how do i use that in instead of coco peat yeah coconut husk Would actually it work? yeah so coconut husk has a string of fiber that actually in fact on youtube there are many films on how to make coconut uh, powder from coconut mm. husk yes but basically there's a very thin string which needs to be removed because that's a very fibrous string and that takes very very long to compost mm -hmm. so people have to crush it or they have to pull out that fibrous bit and leave that string and in fact that particular string is used for coir mattresses right yeah okay so so i think relatively i mean in terms of breaking down quickly that would not happen that nearly not the same happen, yeah and it won't absorb also it won't absorb your water that's what you need right you are putting coco peat for two reasons one is that you're putting it for carbon and you're also wanting to absorb the extra moisture and keep the moisture balance 
right so i think shiv says that is it compulsory to stir the compost once a week i think your answer was if you're using coco peat you don't even need to do that yeah but yeah if you're but using other materials i would definitely say that once a full a unit is filled mm-hmm. then it's a good thing to stir it right every one unit so that means in the 20 liter bucket 15 liter bucket whatever one unit is because you're going to be using many units you will need at least four units at a given time for a family of four right yeah to handle your volumes of waste and the cycle of compost because compost will finish in one and a half months right and then you need space again so so that's the that's the logic and so, one of the things that i find most people can't get used to is this, this continuous process thing that's uh, right and it's like you know your remember the last the first bucket you fill Mm-hmm. that you take out one and a half months later and then it keeps going like that and i'll i'll explain the product use i mean later but if you just had three buckets in a row you mm-hmm. fill one bucket you fill the second bucket and you fill the third bucket and by the time you fill in finished filling the third bucket your first bucket should be ready for you to empty i think we are the fill it shut it forget it generation so yes, yes. what you are exactly. suggesting is a little counter intuitive yeah uh, so another question that uh, i see is from sonika she says if i run out of remix powder can i just add regular coco peat that i can get from a nursery or online yes yes absolutely you can yes uh, one thing just to add to this is yes this will f- fulfill the function of the carbon and absorption of water like poonam said but the remix powder contains microbes so you would yeah. have to find a way to introduce them in in other ways either from kitchen waste itself or from em or something like that i guess yeah yeah so that's that's important to do no uh, microbes also uh, keeps your microbial activity uh, in good health so that's right are always good to add that's right that's right so i think this may be a youtube question uh, somebody called ramanist uh, okay it so says do we need to have six or seven composters to manage daily waste waste assuming the composter will fill in a week and then we need to close it and let it compost which will require whatever six to eight weeks to be ready yeah so you're not six buckets you need at least three okay so then these would work by rotation so yes, yes, as one got full then you would move on to the next and move on to the next and so on yes right so yeah so i i think i'll repeat that mm-hmm. a family of four will need at least four buckets of a uh, 20 liter capacity mm-hmm. yeah or 20 kilo capacity so mm-hmm. not 20 about 15 liter capacity sorry 15 liter capacity four buckets for one family of four right so you you a uh, fill one bucket fully right then you start filling the second bucket fully after it's filled you shut it start filling the third bucket fill it shut it go to the fourth bucket fill it shut it by the right. time you fill the fourth bucket and shut it and right. right when it reaches the top take out the material in the first bucket to another container and start filling in that first bucket again fresh. right uh so what i'm going to do is punam i'm just going to end the polling and i'm going to run another poll yeah. uh, that we have okay so i'm coming to this poll uh and running it now it says do you think decentralized composting is an important way to manage organic waste for our country especially i think in our cities Yeah. Yeah. So one qu- one clarification Poonam I think when you were speaking earlier yeah. you talked about uh, the use of fresh compost being okay I think you were referring is saying it's okay for ornamentals but perhaps yeah. not for food plants. Yeah I'm saying Having- because you yes for food plants I would always recommend that you mature it for another month. Yes so we basically uh, put it in a container somewhere cool dry and kind yeah. of Keep it Let moist. It, yeah, yeah. Keep it a little moist, moist and yeah. make sure that the yeah. entire it's decomposition. Like, it's like old. yeah, yeah. It's like looking after your achar. Now you keep it. Take it. Let it be there for some time. It'll become nice and mature and like a wise old person, and then you use it. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So uh, yes, uh, I think we've got a lot of responses to this. I'll just give it <laughs> half a minute more and. Uh, then we can move on with the next segment
of your presentation yeah yeah uh, in the meantime there was one question from mr vijay kumar who was asking how to compost coconut tree leaves please guide yeah so so that like i explained kiran the uh, coconut tree leaves are are very very they don't want to be composted fast they are saying please let me be the leaves are talking to us they're saying we are very hardy we are a coconut tree leaf so you it's very very hard to compost coconut tree leaves easily and especially uh, i don't know mr vijay kumar is there on this thing no will you share where where is it a coconut tree plantation that you have or is it only one coconut tree that you're talking about i think that might have actually come from uh, youtube youtube okay. Oh, okay okay so we'll try and figure that out but i mean coming from the other end assuming it may be either a plantation or a home garden or something like that uh, i think one of the things is that just because you cannot compost it very fast does not make it uh, uh, i mean i still think it's a very useful thing to have around the garden yes uh, yes or all organic matter ends up being helpful around yes. a garden or a yes. farm I think mulching is where I would use it and it is frequently useful in places where you need something heavier you know in windy yeah. places especially yeah, yeah. or where there's heavy slow of water yeah. so what I might do is that I may incorporate my compost into the soil and then cover it with this heavier mulch which kind of holds things down yeah that's a wonderful idea Karanda. right so yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll I'll It's very good for mulch yeah 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 exceptional yeah. really yeah. uh okay so okay i'll one more question i was just going to bring this up so there have been several people bring up bringing up the question you know what will happen in the monsoons we are apprehensive about how our compost piles will be doing at that time yeah so the, our products actually are monsoon proof uh anything that is enclosed is monsoon proof you only just have, we have all our customers actually keeping our products out in uh, balconies and all you need to do is cover it with a plastic sheet in against very very heavy rain but uh, composting actually happens continues to happen it just i'm telling you composting is got a balance if those three things are in correct order i mean your nitrogen is correct your carbon is correct and your oxygen is correct then the heat is actually generated by the microbes so the microbes will come only when the balance is correct it's like the protein and carbohydrates that are my body needs i yes. have to have the right amount of protein and i have to have the right amount of carbohydrates and if i have both and i can do all the exercise i need so that's the that's the the same logic is there for microbes so if the conditions are right the microbes will do their job they'll generate the heat whether you know and it's really not so dependent on ambient uh, temperature you will find even a broad uh if you're putting the right uh, uh matter the heat is getting generated and there are experiments where in cold winter they've used composting to generate heat for people to sit around right yeah, absolutely so so the important thing to remember is composting is it's your own heat generator it doesn't need the outside so much it's it's about the inside yes no and uh, you know as much as some people there must be thinking it's sounding like half a chemistry lesson uh, yeah. i i think when we are actually doing it you realize that if you're just doing two or three things right yeah. uh, regulating the moisture ensuring uh, you know aeration and ensuring that you are uh, keeping your microbes health high if you just concentrate on just those three things i think in many ways uh, you have all the other processes working for you in the way that you said you know yeah. temperature happening solving certain problems there less incidence of you know bugs and creepy crawlies and so on and so forth and uh, again coming back to the context of apartments like i think composting is something that people understand and do pretty okay with when they have big gardens and spaces outside but when you are in an apartment that's when you know i think a lot of the lessons that you are talking about suddenly become important and our understanding has to be at a higher level yeah I see a question here, which I think I'd like to answer is how. So how do poor people do it? That's right. Uh, community project is more feasible. Any suggestions? Yes. So I'll make one thing a little. I will unravel this a little bit. Poor people don't waste food. Yes. And so they don't really need to compost in that sense. Whatever they, they even what they waste. What I've seen is even I've seen. Um, forget poor and rich people. There are people who don't waste. 
there are there are they know the techniques of using rind and skin peels and like i had my grandmother who would use everything absolutely she i would, think all the grandmothers yeah yeah she yeah. would take everything that is even a peel that we throw away and whatever is rotten or we'll take one tomato and we'll say something is wrong with it and she would put it into a soup or a stock or something like that yeah so the it's a again i'm saying i what I, what we've learned is it's a mindset thing <laughs> there is a whole this is not about poor and rich it's about what you're throwing away have you used fully what it is and whatever you're throwing away is it is it um, is it something that you can reuse or is it something that you have to go to a landfill mm-hmm. that mindset shift that all of us have to happen and yes of course community composting is a very very important thing but i feel that there are like i met poor people who have plants in their homes and they do put all their little onion peels which are really actually have nothing left in them into mm-hmm. that plant That's yeah and they don't waste anything else they don't have the luxury to waste food and so, and they understand some things or they have a way of looking at the world is slightly different from us but communities that means if you have say like a very uh, uh, a dense urban space which has got a lot of uh, offices and things like that yes you need to collect the food waste from there you need to have a community space to put it in and community spaces again the question is who will look after them who will pay for them who will That's maintain right. them and that That's we don't have enough civic sense i think yet in our country but we need to get there no i i think also what you said about mindsets i think another thing yogita and i often observe is that if one is not aware of the fact that a lot of the mindsets that people who work for us or people economically maybe less fortunate than us have are actually absorbed also from contact from us so in the cases where their their views on waste may be similar to our or their behavior or at least about certain kinds of waste right yeah. it usually comes from their interactions from with us and our mindsets yeah yeah so so like one of the things small example which i'll just before we move on quickly mm. uh, kind of mention is that yeah. as soon as you say that you're willing to dig your hands into your composter and solve problems that happen there or put waste there yeah that is the second at which your household help for example says yeah. that no 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 yeah. up till that point they may say no i'm not going to do it yes. and then when they see you are willing to do it then suddenly they are like yeah okay now you know you know what i'll do it don't worry about it you know but that's the other reason why we started uh, uh, this because i really feel you know my father taught me that work is work hmm. there is nothing called less work or dirty work yeah there is nothing called dirty work nothing and i felt that this is one of the things in india we don't have absolutely and therefore i said and you know people ask me why didn't you make this for the poor people right. I, i mean i in fact when i went abroad one of the things was you should make this for poor people i i said no it's like they it, there's a project abroad that says uh, we will make a toilet which has got a plastic thing that you collect for slums hmm. i said no we have to make it for the rich people hmm. and only then will the you, you know we it's not a question of rich or poor everybody and the like you say people are going to look at us and say if you are educated you are doing something maybe that's right therefore we have to do the right thing no i agree and also i mean just relatively speaking there was as you were saying and i think what you were alluding to is that their waste footprint is like a small small fraction of any of us yeah, yeah. and and therefore perhaps a, a smaller challenge in that sense and what what we are seeing now in india right look at all of them they just walking and i'm saying india can walk i say i mm. can't walk from here to my house mm. people are walking the child took her my it was just i mean that's what i'm saying so this i think our country is so diverse mm. that we must remember and do what we can and therefore compost is very important to do i keep telling you it is very important to do okay so just one thing before we continue with the presentation uh, zainab is pointing out she's she's our conscience over here yeah so she's pointing out that we have questions even on the hasgeek page where people okay. signed up mm-hmm. i think we'll come back to those and answer them uh, you know or after the session yogita venita we will answer those and uh, those we will certainly answer over there 
So, uh, Poonam, we can continue. Perhaps you okay. want to talk a little yeah. more about specific products so that yeah. they make sense yeah. to me. So, so, let's just go. So, now we've talked about home composting with your kitchen waste. We've covered your leaf composting in your garden. And we've also talked about some of the basic problems that you can have while you're doing this. The problems are not many. They just smell, bugs, whether you'll get it right. Actually, there are only those three. Yeah. All three are solvable problems. They're, this is not rocket science. This is not like sending a rocket to the moon. This is very solvable. We, we are here to help you solve it. So uh, the, uh, now I'm going to actually go specifically and talk about our products. The first uh, product I'm going to talk about is the home composter. We have a range of home composters. And the... Just one minute, give it, give it a minute to load, yeah. So we have a range of both plastic and terracotta. When we just, when we first started, we started with a signature terracotta range. My idea was to help uh, potters earn a better livelihood, get more uh, money into their hands, because this is a product <coughs> that the urban environment wants. It's a utilitarian product. It's not a decorative product. And because it's utilitarian and it's going to be used on a regular basis, it may get more money into their hands and keep their skill and their traditional life. And over time, over these 14 years, what we've managed to do because of the work and because of how customers have responded so positively to it, that entire cluster in, uh, in Telangana, the government has invested about two crores to set up a common soil processing plant for them. And they're doing pretty well. Of course, in this COVID lockdown, they're facing some problem with the orders, but we, we've, they've started supplying again, so which is a good thing. So this is the range of actually the terracotta range. Uh, we, have, uh, we have three kinds of, basically three kinds of products. We have a stack composter. That means the units, like I was telling you about the three buckets or four buckets that you eat, they sit one on top of each other. Because otherwise, people don't have space in their balconies. The balconies are very small. So this is just stacked, yeah? But the principle is the same. You fill one bucket fully, then you fill the second bucket fully, then you fill the third bucket fully. And in the stack one, what happens is you empty out the first bucket into the last, it's like that extra place that you had and start filling it in again. Then you have the row composting. So here, when you have larger houses and you have space, you keep this particular product, this leave it pot small that my pointer is at, you keep this or this tiny little pot in a row. So you keep three of them in a row or four of them in a row, depending on how much waste you generate. You fill one completely, then you fill the next one, then you fill that and the last one. And then by the time you finish the last one, this one is ready for you to use. So that's a row composter. Then there's the earth composter. The earth composter, the picture is not here, but it's called the prithvi. And it, part of it goes into the ground, very much like the pipe composting. But there is a container that is half in the ground and half outside. And there's another container on top. This way what happens is you can actually harvest the compost. And you need two of them in your garden. And those actually look also very pretty. And it's, I will find a picture and I'll show it you. So these are the three kinds of composters we have. In addition, we have a community composter. So you'll see here, um, these are the home compost range in plastic. This is called the chomp. Again, it's like a row composter. You add many chomps next to each other. This is a gobble solo, which is like a test kit. So if you're not very confident, costs only 600 bucks, you buy it, you try it out. A lot of people actually bought it, uh, you know, single bachelors, people who are living in PGs who want to try it. So we sell that product a lot to that profile of person. And then <coughs> we have this Gobble Senior, which is for a family of four. It's a stack composter and Gobble Junior. Please note that the Gobble series and Chomp series are available on Amazon also. So you can directly order and they'll ship it to you. We also ship it to you and you can order it from our site as well. Then we have one more thing. It's called the Puja composter. Lots of people in India do not like mixing because they have some tradition and some uh, feelings around the flowers that they offer for worship. You can be in any uh, faith, but the flowers that are usually offered for worship are not mixed with the other waste. 
and India has a tradition where those flowers were actually put into water streams. And um, so, uh, I mean, in urban cities, where will you find that? So we created a puja composter specifically only for those, we call it holy compost. So we have, this is a Ganesha here you will see. And here you can grow some plants around it. And here you can actually harvest the compost. There are two units. So this is called the Puja Rangoli and Puja Ganesha. So if I just go to this uh, product, you'll see that this is how you use it. Uh, you put uh, your waste, I mean your uh, flower waste, you put a little bit of water and some microbes and you get very good compost. And each of these products also has a film which you can watch on YouTube. <laughs> So I'd like to also share with you this community composter. This is our community composter, which actually uh, takes large volumes. So a lot of flats all over India, apartment blocks, schools, offices, um, they have invested in this. And again, these also lined up. You can see you fill one completely, then you fill the other. And after that is full, you can take this out. And this is done compost. And, uh, in Bangalore, we are able to actually buy back this compost from apartment buildings and uh, try and see whether, uh, you know, we can. And this particular session on what works, how do apartments actually manage it, what's the best way, will happen next week in the next webinar. So this is the, uh, these are the kind of products we have. We also have like uh, this uh, leaf composting. If you are very keen to try it in your garden. <coughs> We've done this for you and you can, uh, you can actually download the drawing. If you're sitting in a city far away from a Bangalore, we don't like to ship this because it's just shipping, just air, right? So we made it easy for you. You can download the drawing here. You can get it made, fabricated in your local fabricator in your city. And make sure that you follow the dimensions of the drawing carefully because you need to have it off the ground and you need to have a very good door, sturdy door that doesn't rust over time. And keep using it. Please note, again, we have films for this on the site and you can uh, uh, use it and dot your, you see all these people are using it in various places. And uh, you have to keep pushing the leaves down as they go. And then when you want to harvest them, you open this gate you water them here, you can see, and you get really good, very, very rich leaf compost. So I think I'll end here because I'll take questions about uh, products. Please understand that lots of people will say, can't I just use dried leaves or can I use sawdust? Again, I'll reiterate, it's all about how much water can be absorbed and what is the granular size. Sawdust, if you are using it from your treated wood, please don't use it because you don't know what kind of adhesives are used in that or what treatment has happened. Use sawdust directly from the middle, which is pure wood sawdust. But it doesn't have the same properties as uh, cocoa peat powder. So I'll take questions now because now it's 5.49 and I think we're getting close to the end, right? Is it 6 o'clock, uh, Karan? Yes, we, we'll take questions now, Poonam. Yeah. Uh, and I think we'll need a little bit time for that. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just wait for uh, maybe Kiran to pass on some questions. Uh, Yogita, Vinita, in case there's some something on YouTube that you would like to send across, uh, then we'll answer those two. Yeah, sure. I ended yeah. up uh, answering quite a few of them already on um, uh, the chats, um, Karan. Okay. So and maybe the ones that you think are worth repeating here, if there are some more, so that even others who may not have received. Sure. Okay. I, I think I see a question here about coffee grounds. Yeah. Coffee. Uh, which coffee. is that coffee grounds from the coffee vending machine uh, in the office. Can we put it in the compost bin? Compost bin? Yes, absolutely. I think with a lot of this, uh, Poonam, I think it's about the quantities, right? So if you have to mix some into your existing composter, then it works very well. Yes, uh, yes. But I assume that quantities of one thing. Now, like if I was, if I had a coffee shop, right? Hmm. And right. I wanted to compost only coffee grounds. Hmm. Remember one thing, like I said about diversity, right? 
somebody there was one farmer who told me um, you know you have a taste you want salt you want uh, chili you want uh, sour you want uh, you know you have all the shades of taste like that you have to feed the soil with all the taste so only coffee then the soil doesn't like <laughs> so that's you absolutely have, to have a mix <laughs> so, I, I i can give you another example uh, yeah. i think when we first opened our store we had a bar next door mm. and it isn't as cd as it sounds to people outside goa but basically you know people will come there and have a drink in the evening and have their snacks and you know prawns of course would be things that people eat but if this guy had leftover prawns he would dump half a kilo or one kilo of them into a composter a kamba at this time <laughs> at the same time right okay and one would think that it would completely you know go nuts because i mean this stuff was just you know dumped in on top of whatever was in there but we found that if it was managed carefully we could incorporate that also by mixing in other waste or waste and by using something like the remix powder which yeah, is bokashi yeah. that's yeah. what we were using at the time yeah, yeah. so no, no absolutely i think it's a question of how do you balance it off like absolutely. we have a we have a we have a bakery right and what we do with them is because they, there's only maida and all of that right yeah, right 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 atta now that doesn't compost it ferments Right. so we add panchgavya right so you have to add something that will balance it off absolutely there is another question from sheena and she asks that i have a compost pit with a cover out in the garden will i have issues in the monsoon with a cover out in the garden yes if it's a pit i think water would still seep in because yeah. if if it's yeah. goa i mean you're just not going to be able to deflect everything out from the pit Yeah, no, no. If it's a pit which doesn't have a concrete base and all that, hmm. or concrete sides and all, there's a problem. Right. Uh, Shiv asks, can you put date seeds in the compost? Yes, you can. You should. Absolutely. Uh, then, uh, Sonika says, I have the kamba. My biggest issue is emptying the middle pot in the bottom most pot yeah. because it's really yeah. heavy. Heavy. Yeah, yeah. Can I not just keep rotating all the pots? i know yeah. the bottom one is open yeah no no actually yeah you're right sonika in fact one of the things i think we can do where are you based sonika she i'm not sure but she may be in goa i don't know goa okay okay no i mumbai. think that mumbai okay. Yeah, okay then i think you should actually go in for the uh, gobble senior it's easier to lift it's a plastic yeah plastic. composter yeah. yeah much much lighter Yeah. Uh, Madhu asks if maggots are on the lid, should I let it be or clean it up? Clean it up. Absolutely. Uh, Jyoti says uh, we stay in a flat in Mumbai, and I've been composting at home for more than ten years. Yeah. We use a wireframe box, which is twelve inch to in height, with a mess inside for aeration. Yeah. It's kept on our balcony. Yeah. So he says we have a problems of a black bug that looks like a ladybug. which started yes. coming out into yes, our yes. bedroom and kitchen etc yeah 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 these yeah. gives give us some tips about so how to for them eat. you have to take you you our standard thing is take garlic green chili and uh, half a cigarette cut tobacco boil okay. it up in 1 liter of water okay uh, boil it for about 15 minutes and then spray that dilute that and spray it every day for twice a day Right. and uh, then hopefully that should get controlled which bugs are these puna actually Though, this there are is you able one, to recognize them yeah i think there is one black guy who can be very 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 prolific mm -hmm. i don't know its name but i have seen it and i have seen it in some places uh, some customers places and i wish i was like i had enough time to pick it up and uh, put it in chloroform and go and get an insectologist to actually look at it and tell me exactly what bug it is Okay. Which we should do. In fact, if anybody out there wants to research project on it, please come and do work with us. So maybe some, maybe she can send us a photograph, and that would help yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, if, if I know it's the same bug, there's one black guy who comes. Right, right. Yeah. So, so Viraj is in Bombay. He's saying I have an outdoor pit that I have made with cement walls about four foot by four by five, I guess feet. Uh -huh. I put leaves and kitchen waste. Is there, there a way to speed up the process? I get a good amount every four to six months. Yeah. So, Viraj, you should split that pit in half. Put dividers in. Yeah, yeah. Put dividers in, and then you will be able to get uh, faster because it's your volume is too big. 
Okay. May, uh, minimum, actually, the volume that you should work with in cities is three feet by three feet by three feet. More than that, you will have six to eight months return. Right. Understood. So it becomes a modular composter yeah, in that yeah, sense. Yeah. Uh, Vinita is mentioning that it could be a type of feather wing beetle. Beetle. Just I mean, See, as a I told you know. Please understand. Vinita is our researcher. <laughs> Vinita is the person who has the brains in this company. <laughs> so. Uh, Okay, so Jepria Jay, says, what, what, was, what does one do with the leachate? So leachate has two uses. One is that you can dilute it and use it directly to plants. It's very good uh, uh, nutrition. Uh, well, that's the best use. Absolutely. Or you drain it off into your drain and you clean your drain in the process. Right. <laughs> so there's another question which I think uh, is being asked about disposable tea bags. Can these be added in? Uh, not if they're not uh, hundred percent biodegradable. Correct. But but the tea bags, what do they use? Some kind of synthetic material sometimes? Yeah, I would. I mean, right now, if you ask me, I can't tell, and we don't yeah. know. Yeah. Now the even the organic materials have these yeah. microfibers yeah. in them, yeah. Yeah. just to make them last longer. And right. uh, yeah, I think that becomes an. So I think we've answered. Uh, Okay, Arti says, I'm using a Kamba for more than 10 years and I shifted to uh, a ground floor flat recently. My Kamba suddenly started attracting cockroaches. How do I tackle it? Oh, cockroaches. It's unusual. Yeah, very unusual because cockroaches don't like uh, composting. Uh, okay, so then maybe the heat is not building up. Okay. You need to build up enough heat and there the black soldier fly smell also the cockroaches don't like. Okay. So uh, something is not going right. So Neelakshi uh, asked about for, sorry, no, no, for, sorry, for, sorry, her, uh, for her ground floor flat thing. Hmm. I would suggest she places it on a stool, a plastic stool, heavy plastic stool. Okay. And then tries. Okay. So one last question, which Neelakshi is asked about fabric. I think uh, you know it's been answered, but uh, should that go in? thread fabric should it go into the composter for what i mean why would you I mean, put thread in yeah the thread as in you know waste thread in uh, yes if that it's way. if it's a completely cotton yes even okay. our, our our hair can go in yes yeah though it i guess hair takes a long long time to break down no actually it breaks down pretty fast is it yeah mm -hmm. okay fair enough uh, so uh, Thanks, uh, Poonam. I think we'll stop there. Yeah. I'm sure that people have a lot of lot more questions that we need to answer. I'll just kind of try and explain, uh, you know, how we can uh, do that. So I think Poonam mentioned the Dr. Kamba helpline. Uh, so the number for that is 991642661. I think I have that right. Yeah. Absolutely. And And basically you can WhatsApp you know, your images here and have your compost issues diagnosed for you and solutions provided. Uh, please note that you, most of you would have come and registered on the HasGeek page for this event. Uh, there is a section over there for comments and discussion. Uh, please feel free to go over there, list your question and we'll come back and, uh, you know, answer them over the next, over in a day or so. Uh, most importantly, I would just request all of you to uh, help us spread the word to building societies and maybe even office complexes uh, about the next session, which is on community composting or larger scale composting. Uh, I think quite often what I've seen is that individuals have you know, made this connection between their waste and are very eager to kind of uh, you know, uh, start composting. But when they start interacting with larger groups of people, societies on which they may be dependent for cooperation, uh, things kind of get stuck a little bit. Mm. So I think that uh, this will be a session in which you can perhaps engage your society or your friends can engage other societies, housing societies, for them to understand why it's important. And more importantly, I think how it can be done. Uh, and if we can get a lot of people to engage with this uh, i think that we can hope for cleaner cities 
uh, I'm sure this also applies to larger institutions around food, like restaurants, messes, and other places which produce, uh, you know, a lot of kitchen waste. Uh, I do know that we got a call, if I'm not mistaken, from Delhi or Noida, where the police wanted to find out, you know, you know, how can we compost our mess waste better? So this was a few days ago. Uh, good to hear that question, and uh, I hope we have them join us. Uh, Thank you immensely for your time and patience. Uh, thank you so much, Poonam, Kiran, Vinita, Yogita, for backing things up. Thank you most of all, Zainab, for helping us put all of this together. And Amog for putting up with us for a good one and a quarter hour because we <laughs> have to rely on him 100% in order to make sure all of this works smoothly. Uh, I would like to mention that Zainab Amog are from Hasgeek, who Poonam mentioned at the beginning. Uh, these are friends of ours who have pushed us into the digital domain at exactly the right time, I think, mm -hmm. as uh, the COVID situation happened and have forced us to engage with people in this uh, situation. I use the word forced very affectionately. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I do not think that it would be possible for us to do this without them. And as I know, it is not possible for us to do it without Daily Dump also. Uh, uh, great to see all of you here. I'm glad that there was so much enthusiasm and interest. And again, as I said, if you can please make it a point to uh, you know pass the word along for the coming session. That will be the next Thursday. Uh, I believe the date is uh, the 4th of June. And it will yeah. be exactly at the same time. Uh, which is at uh, uh, 4.20 p.m. or so, 4.25 p.m. we'll get started. For those of you who have already participated on this session, uh, you'll get an email for us, from us in case you want to join. For those who, of course, uh, want to register for it, they can go to the HasGeek page and do that. Okay. So thank you all so much for all this time and attention and wonderful sharing of knowledge by Daily Dump. Uh, have a great day and have a great week ahead of you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Poonam. Bye. Bye.